playground wants to put you in the driver's seat. On Sunday, July 3rd, one person is guaranteed to win a 2022 fully electric Mazda MX-30 GT. Draws will be held every 30 minutes from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. for a total of 25 lucky winners, but only one will end up with the lucky keys and get to drive off in a new car. Visit playground.ca for details. This is the Drive By with Freeway Frank. What's happening? Episode 23 of the Drive By. I'm Freeway Frank. It's another solo session today. And I begin with, I think almost everybody's talking about this on social media. Their favorite TV show. Not too many good TV series on in 2022. Let's be honest. There's a couple of them. And one of them is Stranger Things. And the reason why a lot of people identify with that, I mean, Matthew Modine, Winona Ryder, set in the 80s, the 80s music, the kids remind us a lot, minus the, you know, fantasy and everything else going on in the plot of the series. The, the kids remind us of us. You know, if you grew up in the 80s, this was it. Now, Maybe it wasn't middle America for you. Maybe it was Canada or wherever you grew up. But it's exciting to watch a show like this because it connects on so many levels. You know, how parents pretty much, I mean, the thing that I notice the most is how parents let their, their kids pretty much do anything. Nowadays, you know exactly where your kids are. Okay, they're either on the iPad, <laughs> but they're never, they're, they're hardly ever outside playing you know what i mean back in the 80s you'd take off just like the the stranger things kids do uh, and they get on their bikes their banana you know banana seed bikes and and take off and it's always like where do they go where do they go they're always running out of the house they're always never finishing their meal and this is what's so beautiful about this tv show there was a certain freedom that came in the 1980s, and you 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 felt safe sending your kids out, right? Uh, not like today. Now you know exactly, as I said, um, where your kids are. So that's one of the the I think one of the most amazing things about watching Stranger Things. There was an innocence about the 80s, and about you know this TV show brings it up. And then of course with the sci-fi fantasy element of it. It's completely different, but then we, we dream a little and we get to live through the eyes of these characters and these kids, you know, as they're seeing the things that they're seeing. And the music is just phenomenal on this TV show. I am convinced they could play any song from the 1980s. I know the one that you've been hearing this season is Running Up That Hill by Kate Bush, but I'm convinced... You could play any song on this show, and it'll shoot. <laughs> on iTunes, it'll shoot up to number one and uh, become popular again because so many people are, are watching it, and it's such a good TV show. So it's, it's funny because the song by Kate Bush, Running Up That Hill, it, it comes up a lot, and it keeps foreshadowing things that are about to happen in the show, which you have to watch. I find... This season of Stranger Things, and I know a lot of people are feeling the same way, so season four, a lot slower to get to where it's getting. But finally last night, my wife and I watched the final episode before I think the next two, it's a cliffhanger, before the next two come out in July, if I'm not mistaken. And it's, um, it's, it's fabulous how it got to where it got. It was very slow, kind of like The Walking Dead. You know, it, it took forever during the season to get to the mid-season finale, and then took again. You know, as it it build up the crescendo to the um, to the climax, and then uh, resolution after. You know how that works. <laughs> if you've ever been involved in writing um, creatively, so it's just as the seasons of Walking Dead, I, I, I guess as we went from season to season, it just seemed to drag a lot more, 
my opinion, and a lot of other people I think agree. Stranger Things, same kind of thing this season. Really taking a while to get to what will finally be an amazing end to the season. Hopefully not the series, but you never know. But anyway, Stranger Things is fantastic. What was the other song? Pass the Duchy. Pass the Duchy upon the left-hand side. Another song that they were playing, I believe, when they were in the van. And one of the characters um, may, have getting, may have been smoking. I don't even know. But fantastic soundtrack. Great show. Everybody's loving it. And then going through the Netflix catalog and uh, notice my wife goes, oh, look what's back. Floor is Lava. Have you seen this? Floor is Lava. Here's why I like this show. It's so insane, and it brings out all the geeks. So basically, it's it's teams of three and then teams of two as they go for the, the final $10,000 prize. And there's this maze, which is surrounded by water, lava. The floor is lava. And basically, it tests your, your endurance, your your physical ability, uh, your problem-solving ability, try to figure out, you know, if you're aware of what's in the room and you're reading what's on the walls and, and you're noticing things and items that are around you, you're able to, I guess, figure out how to, you know, jet across this maze over the lava without falling in. You fall into the lava, you die, and get to the other side in the least amount of time. And this is a show that, as ridiculous as it sounds, Floor is Lava, and as silly as it is, sometimes I'm watching it, I'm like, I can't believe I'm watching it. It's so fun to watch because you think to yourself, can I do this? You know, And that's the kind of TV watcher that I am. I don't watch cable TV or any of that stuff, please. But any show that I attach myself to, I always say, can I do this? Would I be able to do something like this? You know, Can I be on a show like I still like Big Brother? Would I be able to last all those months in a house of crazies and use strategy in order to get to the you know finale night? And it's the same thing with with floors lava. I think you know even at my age, I have the ability, physical ability, to maneuver through this um, testy maze and get to the other side and win the prize. So love Stranger Things. Floors lava is back. And then I notice uh, the Norm MacDonald special where he's basically in front of a computer. Now, Norm, in the end, where he had been battling cancer for several years, hadn't told too many people, if, if not any, besides close family members, I think. And so in this Netflix special, he's basically in front of a microphone, in front of his computer, doing, during the pandemic, when there were no shows happening and everything, basically, um, you know, a one-hour set of his last material that we know, and it's called Norm Macdonald, Nothing Special. And he, and he literally, uh, you know, what's missing is, is the audience, really, right? Is the audience, because with Norm Macdonald, he had this relationship with the audience, and the audience was synonymous to a Norm Macdonald stand-up routine because his timing, his spacing in between the jokes, oh, ah, yeah, so, uh, ah, and all that, and his breathing and all that, it all, it all made sense when an audience was, was in front of him. And, uh, and he didn't care if jokes failed or not. If, you know, from brilliant jokes, the jokes he knew were horrible and he still did. Uh, something special about Norm MacDonald. And he always, you know, he's, he was the, the comics comic. People love him. And then after the Norm MacDonald, nothing special sit down comedy, I should call it, because he was sitting down. Uh, David Letterman, Conan O'Brien, Conan, um, David Spade was also there. And uh, they were all talking about Norm, uh, Dave Chappelle. And they were all talking, Adam Sandler. And they were all talking about Norm and his show and his abilities and what they saw, how they interpreted his his last comedy delivery or routine you have to watch it not everybody's gonna get it some of the jokes are like you know norm has a very sometimes morbid <laughs> joke telling uh, content and um 
And so you have to either love him. I, I think if you're high, I wasn't high during this, but if you're high this, I think it's even funnier. But I loved it and love how he called it nothing special because you can tell he was just still piecing these jokes and the timing of these jokes together, but he didn't give a shit. And so it was brilliant. So if you get the chance and you haven't yet, Stranger Things, Floor is Lava, always fun. Norm MacDonald, nothing special. And speaking of nothing special, our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues to deliver his delusional agenda this time this week in Barbados. Earlier this week, he was in uh, the Rockies, I guess, and he was there for a with military officials. <laughs> I can't keep a straight face. Justin Trudeau is in the Rockies at some military facility with military officials. Justin Trudeau. I mean, who takes this? This is what I think about, okay? People are like, Frank, you're obsessed with Justin Trudeau. I'm not obsessed with him. I just don't know how a guy who spews baloney 24-7, you know, who's the biggest and ultimate phony that we have here in Canada, one of the biggest phonies on the planet, how people can't see through this. I mean, if I'm part of this military group of, you would think, highly regarded people somewhere in some outfit in Colorado, and they say Justin Trudeau from Canada is coming in, I mean, I just can't, I mean, how do you keep a straight face? How does anybody welcome this guy, considering what he's done and continues to do? That's the, the thing to be. Anyway, he's in Barbados. And uh, in Barbados, they have the Summit of the Americas. That's what's happening there. So imagine, he's in Barbados. And he's there with, uh, with his wife, by the way. I saw them coming down the steps of the plane, which we pay for, by the way, Canadian people. He's in Barbados with, apparently, you know, you always hear the rumors his wife left him. Bullshit. His wife is always next to him and with him. So I don't believe in those rumors that they're not together either that or she's taking the opportunity to go I mean, who wouldn't want to go to barbados one of my favorite places on the planet bayesian people are some of the most fantastic people i've met barbados one of the nicest places i've been to i love banks beer i wish this podcast was brought to you by banks beer banks beer is wonderful beer made in um in barbados i i love the fish fry and their market and everything and their beaches are some of the most beautiful beaches in the world. Had a chance to go there twice with my radio gig and interviewed Katy Perry in Barbados, Simple Plan, another group who's, um, whose guy was found guilty this week we're not going to talk about, uh, Katy Perry, to mention just a few people. <laughs> Had the chance to interview in a beautiful setting like Barbados and stay at, at the time, the Crane Hotel was a gorgeous hotel where all these interviews were happening and they had an amazing sushi restaurant anyway barbados is amazing but they're having so they're ha uh, they're, they're discussing climate change in barbados i would think you know if you're going to have a meeting of people and you're going to discuss climate change go somewhere where you could see the climate changing i mean what's changing in barbados it's hot it's sunny and hot every day there might be a draft of wind another day and the weather's always absolutely stunning and gorgeous. And when the rains move in, they move in really quick, booming out, unless it's hurricane season. What climate change discussion are you having in Barbados? I guess that was the middle ground because there's a lot of Latin American leaders there and a lot of leaders from all over North America. And let's go to Barbados on Canada's dime. Thank you, Prime Minister, once again. A wild 6 million, 6 million Canadians can't, can't travel. They still can't get on a plane and go from Montreal to Toronto. They still can't cross a border, but JT and Jessica Beale over there are hanging out in, um, in Barbados discussing climate change. By the way, as they discuss climate change, they arrive on this beautiful island of Barbados. They're all arriving in, in jets, private jets, right? Hundreds of them, some would say, depending on the summit, thousands, to discuss climate change. Who takes these people seriously anymore? This is why I obsess on people like, like this salami. Because 
I think to myself, in the beginning, they probably voted this guy in. That's all I'd hear in the beginning, including my old co-host. He's so good looking. He's so good looking. He's so good looking. That's what you'd hear. You know, he was he was the um, the face of the future of Canada. He was saying all the right things. People voted for him in droves, not once, not twice, barely a third time, but they did. I never voted for this guy. I knew he was a farce from the beginning. I could smell this guy coming from a mile away, all right, especially because he's from my generation. I believe he's 10 months younger than I am and born on, if I'm not mistaken, he was born on Christmas Day. What a gift. What a gift to the people of Canada. But I could understand in the beginning the hype. The hype, okay? I never bought into the hype. He's so good looking. Look at his hair. Look at his locks. Look at his eyes. Look at it. But then he starts speaking, you know, and he start, the smugness comes out. I mean, the smugness is, I mean, he's, he's put it in sixth and seventh gear. Never mind. He's a Formula One vehicle going around the track. He's in, I don't even know what gear they put, 12th gear. I don't know. That's, that's level smugness he's in. How anyone? Cannot see right through this guy now, to me, is you're a lost cause. I, I Seriously, if you cannot see. I mean, I know some people, they're still liberal. They're still, you know, they, they still believe in some of these, some of the values. Um, he, he just, he's the leader of the party and the prime minister of Canada. It doesn't necessarily mean they like them. But, but, so, but still, you're voting for this guy to represent you and to make all the major decisions in your country, along with this party, which has now gotten together with another party, the NDP, and formed this coalition, right? You believe in these people to figure out things and make our country a better place. They've done nothing, again, in my, in my opinion, they have not done nothing to make this country better. If anything, they've made it worse. And then we continue to feed the animal. Okay, this guy is... This guy is the animal, the monster in Stranger Things, and he doesn't want to go away. And with every gate you're going through, you know, he's coming back and uh, making the lives of many miserable. That's who he is. What's, I, I got to look this up. I mean, and this is the thing that I'm not good about uh, or I'm not good with, remembering things. He's, even as I'm watching <laughs> Vecna, that's it. Is it Vecna? Vecna. Vecna can physically reach into the human world. Is a humanoid monster with black skin and movable vines that protrude from his entire body. This is uh, Vecna. Vecna is Justin Trudeau. What I was saying is I, I never remember, you know, I, I, I know... Obviously, Eleven, Jane, the main character, and Millie Bobby Brown. But then after that, you know, Winona Ryder, um, Paul Reiser, Matthew Modine, all those great kids, all those great actors. I can't remember their real names. Anyway, and I forget things. I forget the titles and all that. I don't know if it's early Al Alzheimer's. I always talk about this. In early, I don't know what's going, but I think it's, I've always been this way. I just forget things. People will tell me sometimes, remember last season, The Big Brother? And I'll be like, kind of. Do you remember this person? And... If they're not mentioning the name or the character of something to me, I might forget. These are things that don't stick in my mind. However, something happened back in 1982 or 97 or 2004, and I'll remember it. Go figure. But something I just watched, can't remember for the life of me. Vecna, if that's how it's pronounced, this is who the prime minister is. All right? And uh, ugly, ugly character. Brut. Buh, que brut. And again, that's uh, ugly, by the way, in Italian. <laughs> and, and, uh, and then, you know, it's in the beginning, uh, you have to tolerate, he's so good looking. But now, now, who looks at this guy now and thinks the same thing, you know? I mean, I never thought this guy was good looking. I never did. And again, don't people become less attractive when they start opening their, their, their mouths? I've always been this way. The girl could be the hottest girl. And I look at her and I'm like, oh, model. This, she's unbelievable. And then she starts to speak. And her demeanor and everything that's coming out is unattractive. 
makes makes the person unattractive. It's like, shut up. So, listen, I'm not into personal attacks, and I don't want to personally attack. I'm, I am constructively <laughs> criticizing or demolishing the prime minister, which I continue to do. And, you know, on personal attacks on how his wife looks or this person looks, look, look, look the bottom line is, I would never go down that road because it's unnecessary. I'm talking about policies. I'm talking about what he's done, what he hasn't done, how he's ruined my country. And uh, attacks don't need to get personal. But the guy's not good looking, okay? He's not that great. He's not that good looking. So let's stop using the, he's so attractive. And, you know, if I have to vote between somebody who's unattractive, Stephen Harper, uh, unattractive, Andrew Scheer. And uh, they're not that attractive. They're not that unattractive, those people. But, uh, or um, Aaron uh, O'Toole or uh, Pierre Polyev. Um, but I got to vote for this guy because, I mean, do people really, really go to the ballot box and think this way? Nuts. Hope you're enjoying this episode of The Drive-By. It is sponsored by Playground. Check it out. I'm your host every single Sunday at Playground, beginning at 1 o'clock, draws every 30 minutes, leading up to the Chase the Ace game show, which will be playing again this Sunday. How cool is it? Current progressive jackpot making its way towards the max 25000 is $16,500. How can you win? you got to be one of 15 people selected via draw throughout the day. Then all 15 people come up, and they get a chance to either pick the Ace of Spades or the Ace of Playground worth 1000 and $1,500 respectively. And then in part two of the contest, you're going for the progressive jackpot, which is at $16,500 if you pull out the ace of spades. Once again, draws begin at 1 p.m., game show after 8 o'clock, and then the Lucky Keys finale on Sunday, July 3rd, with your shot to win a $55,000 MX-30 GT Mazda electric vehicle. All Chase the Ace winners also receive a Lucky Keys license plate golden ticket once again for that big finale. One person guaranteed to win that electric vehicle. Check it out. It's playground.ca slash freeway frank or click on the link below if you're watching on YouTube to get your $10 in freeway play at Playground. Trudeau at a military conference in Colorado earlier in the week. <laughs> That's fun at a military. I am telling you, if I was a general and this guy walks in, I would be like embarrassed. It would be time to go take a shit. Honestly, it would be time to say, my stomach is just, I need to go. It's not even a number two, it's a three or four. But it's just unbelievable to me that people, th you know, keep inviting this guy. I mean, incredible. And what is he showing? By the way, what is Trudeau showing? Uh, what's our biggest weapon in Canada? The cloth mask? <laughs> I brought my big missile. Here it is. This is what's going to save us all. We have no military, but here is. is the fucking cracker jack. Anyway. You know what made me angry? <laughs> There are people voting here in the city of Montreal. I know there's a lot of other cities in Canada that go that have this problem. Potholes, you know, and potholes come from obviously weather systems, you know, causing causing the 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 roads, the asphalt to break down and uh, and then holes turn up all over highways and streets. In your city now some cities more than others depending on the quality of the roads and what they use to build their roads uh, obviously weather ha is a factor but so you know there's no potholes in florida or arizona or i've never really truly seen potholes in new york either so they seem to be all here in quebec even ontario's got that figured out i think for the most part and i remember seeing a lot of potholes like edmonton has potholes you know um Calgary, I'm sure, I, even though I don't recall. The, the potholes I recall the most, they're more like craters, are here in Montreal. And it seems to find me. They seem to find, is this a, do you have the same problem? They seem to find your car all the time. Even, even as, how could you be in the month of June driving down the street, okay, and you're down the highway, you're driving down the highway, your wheels are in the highway track within the two lines, right? the two dividers, 
and you're driving perfectly down the middle of a highway, boom, not once, twice, and if you don't have your Waze on, and people are great with that app, they'll tell you, you know, 100 meters away, 500 meters away, there's a dead road and roadkill, there's a hole in the highway, there's a pothole, but if you don't have that on, it's um, good luck, okay? And then my wife is always like, she gives me shit. She's like, you didn't see that? I'm like, it's midnight, and uh, the roads are dimly lit, and no, and I'm driving literally perfectly down the road behind another car that's 100 meters. Out. How do I spot the pothole? I know How? Anyway, there's no reason to buy a new car anymore because to drive around the city, especially in Montreal, even in the month of June and still hitting potholes is unacceptable. But there are people, there's like pothole awards, right? So now the list came out here in Quebec as to where the worst pot. this is how bad it is and how funny at the same time. They're voting on the worst potholes in the province. And where, will, where might you find them? So the thing is, do they not get fixed? <laughs> it's like apparently not. They're still there. These are the worst potholes. Go see them for yourself. It's like a it's like a museum. It's the museum of potholes. And when this list comes out, it makes me angry because I'm like, how could especially you be driving and taking an exit and that pothole is right there in the middle and nobody does anything to to fix it? I mean, you would think you're closing bridges, you're closing tunnels, you're closing arteries and highways during the night from midnight to five, you can figure out putting a couple of pylons up and fixing a pothole. No. Why are they still up week after week? Why are they still there week after week, month after month? And and these these lists come out and, and, and aren't you embarrassed? Like Maniscalco would say, aren't you embarrassed? It's embarrassing, man. It's just another thing to add to the embarrassment of living in a, in, in a place that should be. Quebec is a beautiful province. Montreal's a great city, but I don't know. I don't know. We keep, we keep adding the dominoes, and the dominoes keep falling. These are the same problems that existed, you know, when I was growing up in the 80s and 90s. Nothing's changed. It's the same bullshit over and over. Language, same thing. You know, with Bill 96 I discussed last week, it's the same thing. It's, it's just in a different form. Instead of, you know, the form being the referendum or talk of separation, it's a bill that gets passed, and it's the same bullshit. And get this, okay? This is a writer of an article that is talking about... He wrote an article, and he's talking about what Bill 96, what they'll be able to do when French language inspectors come over to your premises, your place of business, they'll be able to do this. The law allows the state to enter your business based on an anonymous complaint without warning or warrant and then inspect data on computer systems and electronic devices. The state, as in Quebec, can fine businesses up to 20000 should said data not contain the requisite, in other words, the right amount of French. More specifically, language inspectors can take photographs and obligate anyone on the premises to give these inspectors access to any of their electronic components. So between that, Bill 96 in Quebec, and uh, people who are going to be knocking on your business to make sure you're speaking and you're doing your business in French, which is, by the way, and I always say, French is a beautiful language. I'm all for the strengthening of French in Quebec, which has been happening for decades. I think we're good now. But here we are again with now what? People showing up to your house to check and see. Notice when they asked uh, the, uh, the premier of Quebec, that François Legault, that question. So like, are people going to be like... Uh, should they be concerned that someone might be coming to their house, knocking on the door, and he, he made that, that face almost like he was uh, blowing a load in his pants? Because I think he did. I think, I think he realized, as somebody said that, yeah, yeah, we might be showing up to your house to make sure you're speaking French. In your house! And then, how about the liberals, the liberals who, and, and by the way, I know of, 
customs guards who have done this already in Canada because I could have sworn them going through my phone years ago, but I could be wrong, okay? But how about the liberal plan, which would include customs being able, if they suspected something, to go through your phone, to go through your phone, your computer, to to check to make sure that, you know, you're telling the truth about something that, um, I mean, where, where, where are we living? Where are we living? We're living in the Twilight Zone. Another great song. <laughs> Honestly, we are living. But nothing has changed is my point, okay? Things have just been, now they just have been masked in a way as something else, okay? It's, it's things that have always, if you tell people, and I left Quebec many years back for 18 years. When I was gone, you know, people would tell me, ah, it's better, this is, and I came back. The minute I was back, same bullshit every day. And, and I love this place. Go figure. But because we love it so much, because Montreal is such a fantastic city and everything about the culture in, in this province, it could be such an amazing place. But they always send it back. You know, a couple of centuries back because of the because of archaic and backward thinking and people that can't just move on and get on with it. It's it's always it's just disguised as something else is what I'm saying right now. It's disguised as something else. But it's still here. It's never gonna go away. And so a lot of people have made the decision to get that F out and to move away which is sad when you have to leave your 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 place of birth and go somewhere else because they just can't get it right here you know and and it's the same way if this fall the cases go up and the pandemic returns i know a lot of people who are not going to put up with it they're going to pack their bags and they're going to get the hell out of here because you could keep bringing, you know, once now they, they hold that over the people, right? And it's like, well, we got them to wear masks. We got them to stay home. We imposed curfews. We closed all the businesses and restaurants. They were at, at, our, at our mercy and they listened to us. So if anything ever goes uh, badly again, or we head down that unfortunate healthcare road, uh, which we can't do anything about, we can't fix the healthcare system because it's been in crisis for fucking 60 years, then we'll just do the things we always did and we'll mask up and we'll reduce the amount of people that could go into a place might have to shut down again but we'll keep everybody safe this is how they think all right they don't think the way we should be thinking which is solution based let's figure out how to fucking fix that pothole once and for all let's figure out what to put in the roads when we're when we're, we're putting the roads together, when we're building the infrastructures, let's figure everything out so that we don't have to go back and fix something over and over again. And God forbid we can't fix it anymore, we just leave it like that to rot. So bringing up potholes, bringing up the healthcare system, it's all synonymous. It's all synonymous, all right? It's all intermeshed. They're all associated to each other because <laughs> if, you, if you put language and infrastructure and healthcare and put it into a, a, a pot i mean it's the soup of disaster and and that's what this province is about it's like put it all in and we're going to come up with some concoction and this is the concoction this is you don't like it get the hell out if you like it these are the rules if you want to participate I couldn't believe this story. North of Montreal, oh, had this happened, and uh, oh, and I think I remember back in the day. I could have sworn this happened when I was in elementary a couple of times. But if this happened in 2022, and I was a child, and my dad was around, he was my dad in these times, and this happened. But the beating that the educator or teacher would have gotten, huh, the parents of the students who had to endure this abuse, uh, a, a school in North End, Montreal, if I'm not mistaken. Staff member put a piece of tape across the mouths of several children 
And one of those kids, autistic, to top it all off. I mean, how out of touch do you have to be that, you know, look, there's sometimes <laughs> whoever the little shits may be, and they may be your little shits in your household. And I'm sure, you know, sometimes you've seen the, and you've come to the point where you've wanted, you, you know, to do what you had to do, like parents may have done in the past. Not saying that's right. But you're like, you know what? Stay calm and I can't hit my kid. I can't do this. This is abuse. I can't do this. I can't. What went through the mind of this person, of this staff member, that they thought this would end well? I'm going to put, you know, maybe these kids are talking. They won't shut up. I'm going to put a piece of tape across her mouth. I'm going to put a piece of tape across his mouth. And I'm going to put um, a, ta a piece of tape across the, the poor kid with autism to top it all off. Oh, the trifecta of abuse right there. All right. It is unbelievable to me. Those parents should be livid that educator, teacher, staff member, whoever it is, should be immediately fired for that unacceptable behavior. No one should be touching your kids. No one should be telling even your kids to shut up. Be quiet. Respect the teacher. One thing. Grabbing your kids, taping your kids, punishing your kids in a way that, you know, it's inappropriate or makes them a laughing stock or ridicules them in front of other students. Unacceptable. It was never acceptable. We let a lot of things go in the 80s and 90s, but nowadays none of this stuff flies. All right? It is unbelievable. When I read this story, I had to read it two or I had to read it two or three times. I was like, this person taped the mouths of several kids. Oh, man! If I were those parents, I'd be going into that school demanding to see the person who did it, and the principal and the teacher, and I would rip them apart, not physically, verbally. Who knows? The cops may show up, but unacceptable behavior unacceptable i had to read that twice how about the law that just came out in uh, quebec it's a new law that allows to identify a parent now instead of a mother so unofficial documentation in quebec by the government uh, so now whenever you're signing something you could identify as a parent instead of as a mother or father so if you don't want to say whether you're a mom or you want to say whether you're a dad you just identify as parent. I looked at that and thought, does this bother me? And I thought, which in Italian means, what do I care? But as long as it still gives an opportunity for you to check mother or father, I'd be okay with that. But if they changed and eliminated mother or father, is that what they did as a parent instead of a mother, allows you to identify as a parent instead of a mother or father on the official documentation as a parent. Or, or I, I'm not sure if it gives you the choice to identify as a parent or a mother or father, which I think that that's fine. But if it's just allows me to say, to tick the parent box and I can't tick mother or father, that's a little bizarre. But then again, nothing surprises me anymore in 2022. Considering all these topics I just brought up back to back to back to back. <laughs> this is within a couple of hours of all these stories coming out. Wow. I'm going to end it on this. Somebody wrote to me, Phil, Philomena, said, Freeway. And so Bill 96, or as I call it, 69, has started. We can't even write what we want on a birthday cake. It's already starting. I thought I would share this with you, LOL. My son spoke to the woman in perfect French. So her son was buying a birthday cake for her, Phil. And so he was in a pastry store, bakery, wherever. And my son spoke to the woman in perfect French, asking what flavors the cakes were. When he had chosen one, he asked her to write happy birthday. When he opened the box at home to place the candles before they wished her a happy birthday, she had written it in French. And so it begins. There it is. I don't, I don't know if you're going to see it. Bonne fête, Philomena. 
Now, <laughs> there's the beautiful cake, by the way. This looks like a strawberry shortcake. And one of my favorites. Bonfait Philomena. Now, if it wasn't specified, you're in a, a you know French bakery. It's going to spermet uh, bon fight, and you know then the person's not going to know that you that you meant it in English. But if he specifically said, which Phil writes to me here, he specifically said, asked her to write "Happy Birthday," and the person then turns around and just does bun fight Philomena in hidden, and then puts it in the box, and and that to me is. A cause for concern, yes, because it's ultimate disrespect. And let me tell you, you might be a mom and pop shop selling that cake, but you're going to piss off a lot of people doing stuff like that. And if you're telling your staff it has to be in French, we got bigger problems. And there's big companies that operate out of Montreal and are national companies or international companies. You could walk into Canadian Tire. You could walk into Home Depot. You could walk into Tim Hortons and all that. And let me tell you, if ever any member or any employee of the store says French only or, or whatever, there is no way that that's coming from the head office. And those people should be reprimanded because as a client, you should be able to be served in the language that you choose to speak. Now, once again... We're in Quebec, you give respect, you start off in French, you go to English, whatever the case is. Or you say it in French, the client starts speaking English, they want to be served in English, that's what you go to. The client wants happy birthday on their cake, you don't write bun fight. This, this is the place we live in. This is, this, this, this is the place that, that, that and the word in Italian, it's pezzend, okay? It's like it's small, it's small town mentality, all right? This is not big, this is not the stuff that big cities are made of. Like, this is, this is small town. This is like, you know what? I'm going to put happy birthday in French. Fuck them. <laughs> That's what he's basically said. So go back. I'm not putting happy birthday. I mean, where do we live? Where do, what? difference does it make to you the guy's speaking to you in french too he's shown you all the respect in the world he wants his fucking cake to say happy birthday put happy birthday on it thanks for watching episode 23 of the drive-by podcast i'll be back again next week well no one's going to cancel me unless it's uh, bill 11 and justin trudeau finds a way to shut her down after i said he's not that good looking because he's not that good looking playground wants to put you in the driver's seat on Sunday, July 3rd, one person is guaranteed to win a 2022 fully electric Mazda MX-30 GT. Draws will be held every 30 minutes from 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. for a total of 25 lucky winners, but only one will end up with the lucky keys and get to drive off in a new car. Visit playground.ca for details. This is the drive by with Freeway Frank. Watch all episodes of the drive by on YouTube. Listen in on Spotify, Apple, Google, Amazon, Podbean, and tune in.